Oh yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech, and today I'm here with Joel from Simple Tech Review, and uh, we're going to talk about some news and technology. And uh, anyways, Joel is kind of a got a he kind of prefers iPhone and Apple stuff, and I'm kind of more of an Android guy. But I have used an iPhone. I used to own one. I own a few iPads. Joel's owned a few Android phones as well. So we're both like both platforms, but we just have a little bit of different perspective on things. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, cool. First thing, Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, so how's it been going, Joel? Hey, pretty good. Yeah, I've just been pretty busy, but I've got a couple things that I've been working on and trying to gather up a little bit of news to talk about and stuff like that, too. Um, I've been working on this uh, video for um, just an external portable hard drive I like that's pretty fast. It's like about 200 um, megabits per second or megabytes per second. So... That's, been That's sweet. a Thunderbolt drive, right? It is. So yeah, it's just that one's just for Mac, but yeah. Cool. Well, let's talk about some news first. So uh, let's see. The first news I had was uh, Samsung is reporting that their profits are going to be going way down, especially for mo for smartphones. And to me, this is because of two. Well, one thing that I think really hurt them is the Galaxy S5. It kind of wasn't really a a new, it wasn't really a new phone. It was kind of like the same old phone, just released with a few little upgrades on it. And so I think that hurt them a lot, and that might be part of the reason they're losing money. And then the second thing is, it's going to hurt them in the future, is that they didn't beat Apple. Apple sold 10 million iPhones right before Samsung released the Note 4. So I bet you, you know, at least a million or two of those of those phones could have been sold and locked into a two-year contract with a, a Note 4 instead of an Apple if they would have beat them by a month. So they, they lost out on all that by just a month. So anyways, I don't know, what, have you heard anything about that news? No, just um, that makes sense to me. I mean, I, th I feel like the Samsung um, Galaxy S5 wasn't that big of a, a hit or anything and didn't, didn't do that much more than just what the, what the 4 did, so I think that kind of hurt them. I think it was a big hit, but it just wasn't. Uh, it just wasn't like a lot of people who really like phones. It it was kind of a letdown for them. It's 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 yeah, a good phone and solid, but it it was kind of like uh, when an Apple goes to a four from a four to a four S. You know? Yeah, but they called exactly. it the five, so it was kind of uh, to me it was a big letdown. I I and I some of the I mean just the. To me, one of the main disappointments is just that they made it so big, but yet this the bezels are big, but the screen wasn't much bigger. That I want the bezels to be shrinking. Like some of these, oh, that's what I need to get is some some uh, pictures of these sharp phones here. So maybe while you're talking about a uh, product, oh. I'll go ahead and show you the sharp liquid. That phone to me it looks like there's a couple different ones actually. I'm gonna pull up a picture, but do you have a product you want to talk about a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I can. Well, how about I, I can I mention some news stuff, or um, would it be better to do a product for real quick? I can do either one. Do some news, and I'm going to pull up that sharp liquid phone while you're doing that. Okay, cool. Well, just let's see. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting. It's a little bit um, different topic than maybe you guys normally talk about, but um, I noticed that uh, uh, Elon Musk, the guy who owns Tesla, um, just said that 90% of uh, that his vehicles next year will be able to drive themselves 90% of the time. Really. Yeah, I, and I mean, saw a little video of that. That was that is cool. I didn't spend a lot of time yet, and just just basically woke up and looked at it for a few minutes. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Let me just get a picture up, just to, just to, just to kind of like get people thinking about it. But um, yeah, it's I think that's pretty awesome. I mean, I think in the states, this they're still a long ways off from being able to uh, really see that be allowed. But it's cool that they're working on that. And, yeah. Um, I think they should push that forward as fast as possible. You know, people are like, oh, it might not be safe and this and that, but it's like, when has a computer been less accurate than a person, you know? They're, yeah. You know, I bet you once it starts happening, it'll become, I bet in ten, 10 years, people will be like, that'll be the safe way to drive is to have the auto driver on and you're just there as a backup. And if you aren't, you're going to be like, oh, they were going less safely because they, were, they weren't in auto driver mode, you know? The exactly. Is going to be better eventually. And maybe you know there'll be a, one or two bugs, and people will make a big bunch of sensationalism about it. But it will be a lot better in the long run. I mean, can you imagine? You go out to the bar, and then you you want to drive home. You can't, of course, you sh or you shouldn't. But right. you can just get in your car and have it auto drive you home. You know, that'd be awesome. 
Yeah, that would probably save a lot of lives right there. I'm sure that the rates on stuff are going to go down once they start getting some of this stuff on the road. Just parking even, I mean, I think that's going to be a big plus. It's just, you know, so many people can't really parallel park and stuff like that. It'll be nice to um, just have those kind of options. And now, for was the, this the same? I saw the car that they re I saw just a quick thing, too, about a car. It had dual motors in it, one in the front, one in the back, and they were, you know, controlled by wire, so instead they had a reaction time of milliseconds instead of seconds like a regular four-wheel drive car. Was this was this is the D, I think, is right, is what it was, right? Um, yeah, I think that's for the D that they're talking about. I mean, I think it's just talking about the new set of vehicles that are going to come out next year, all of them, because that's just more of a software thing, I think, than... Yeah, but it's for, like, hardware. traction control. There's That helps with safety also if they... Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose that's true. Uh, all four tires independently, you know. Um, yeah. But I don't know all the details, but it looked cool, and it and maybe it's for better acceleration. I think they were saying it could accelerate in, like, 3.2 or 3.5 seconds or something like that, 0 to 60. So oh that gosh, that's pretty awesome, too. That's Dang, crazy. I can't, believe, I, can't believe, I can't find this phone, this sharp phone. Oh, here we got a picture. I heard those things are pretty cool. Maybe that's not. Uh, I can do another article real quick that I just yeah, saw a rundown on. Um, okay, so this is a Mac one, but I just thought it was cool because of the specs and stuff like that. You guys might uh, kind of think it's interesting. The uh, the new iMacs are going to be supposedly the rumor is. Uh, here, let's see if I can get a picture of a Mac up for you here. Uh, the rumor is that it's going to be a 27 inch. Um, which they've had before, but this one's going to be a 5K resolution, which would be pretty awesome, I think. I mean, uh, 4K is getting to be a big deal, but um, I'm not even sure how they're going to do 5K, really. I mean, I mean, it's not like it's impossible, but like, is anyone going to support it and stuff? But I don't know. Oh, I think it's the way to go. I mean, especially you get a big monitor right in front of your face. To yeah, me, the most so nice. important place to have 4K is the monitor. Like, TV is secondary. Tablets and phones, there's no reason to go above 1080p, I personally think. Maybe on a tablet. Def I mean, I, I'm, that's, oh, yeah, but later I'll talk about the phone I'm picking. I want to go to the 1080p phone. I actually don't want a 2K phone. I think it just wastes power. You know, that I had yeah. the LG G3, actually sold it, and it was a good phone, but it just, uh, it, you know, it was a little dim all the time. It wasn't the best on power, and there was, I mean, and I didn't think there was that much reason to have that bright of a phone, you know. I mean, that, that high resolution of a phone, I can't see it anyways. I mean, it did look nice and smooth, but it seems like overkill and 1080p, actually lower resolution is actually better on battery life because it doesn't have to make so much light to go through that that L LCD. Maybe yeah, LED would I be agree. more efficient since it doesn't have to boost up the power to go through anything, you know, but yeah, it seems just... I just think most reviewers are seeing screen. the same things on the phones. It's a waste, when, especially when you're talking about like a 4.7 inch screen or a 5 inch screen to go past 1080p is just yeah, wasting power, kind of. But yeah, that's one of the things that impressed me the most at CES this year was just um, the uh, the really high quality HD uh, 4K monitors and stuff. So I would be excited to see uh, yeah, see what Apple puts out. Yeah, computers happen, I think. Because you're monitors, so close to it, you know. To have it as computer monitor. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say because you're so close to the screen, and if you're doing like video editing or or photography editing, you really do want to look at the details and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. I'm kind of planning. I got that 49 inch uh, monitor for doing reviews and stuff, but I'm kind of thinking about putting it as my desk monitor because then I could just do video editing. It'd be just this nice big screen, and it's 4K. So since it's so close, I won't see the pixels because it's that high resolution, and I'm only two feet away from it. You know, so I'm seriously looking into going at the, using that. Let me go ahead and show you that sharp crystal that I was talking about. This is the way I think phones should go in the future. Let's see here. Uh, just one sec. Sorry. No problem. Uh, here, you want me to do one more while you get that ready? Right? Oh, you got it. Is it. Are you seeing it? Yeah, whoa. So that's like no bezel. bezels on the thing. Yeah, no bezel. That's sweet looking. That's that's a phone you can buy right now. It's actually a mid-range phone though. It's not high end, but I think they should all go this way. I mean, this is you want what you want it to be is almost all screen and no anything else, you know? I think that's that's sweet and they got the camera down on the bottom so you're, you know, and your speaker of course and everything and you know, mm -hmm. you put a case on it. Are from that. I don't know. Everyone's like, "Oh, if you drop it, it's going to break the screen." Well, a lot of phones are going to break the screen if you drop yeah, them. You know, that's why you put a case on it. Stick a case on it. I always stick a case on everything. I don't know. That's just me. But, anyways, I think they're going in the right direction. They have a couple others too that are looking like that. So, 
And actually, Sharp That's has some of the most power efficient LCDs that are available too. I saw a demo at CES, and they had a little watt meter hooked up to the screen, and you can see the Sharp. It actually varies depending what's on the screen, whereas a lot of them are just all the time drawing, you know, say one watt. This one was drawing, say, just for I can't remember exactly, but the one they had comparing it to was drawing like say one watt, and the Sharp was going anywhere between like 0.1 watts to say up to like 0.8 watts depending what was on the screen, so it varies by what it's showing, but it was, mm -hmm. it was way more efficient, and you know that's true because that's what a lot of big phone makers do, like Apple, um, a lot of a lot of the other ones are using Sharp LCDs also, so anyways, wow. the phone is sweet, I wouldn't mind getting this, except for that it's on Sprint, I can't use Sprint, <laughs> so can't go there. when it comes to T-Mobile, then, then that's for me, so Anyways, cool. uh, let's move to the next thing here. What, do you want to talk about one, or do you want me to talk about one? Yeah, I got one more that's pretty quick here that I can show. Or okay, go ahead. Another one. Um, let me get the screen thing going. But um, this is a cool navigation tool that you can use. Maybe you've heard about it. It's a, I think it's the Kickstarter campaign. Um, but I, I want one. I'm thinking about putting in for it. It's called NavD. Have you heard of this? Oh, that's awesome. Um, no, you surprised so me with that. That's cool. It's a high. It's like a high. Um, it's a really, really small um, projector, but it's like really high quality, and it just pr projects it onto a little clear screen right there that you mount on your dashboard like that. And of course, it's like all integrated with both Android and uh, iOS, so there'll be apps that are specific for it oh. and help you just talk to it. And you can also like wave your arms. There's a um, YouTube video um, that the guy explains it all. So I'll, maybe we can put a link down yeah, the we'll show link notes to about that, that in the description of this podcast. So yeah, that little still... box down there, does that is that have like the, the electronics housed in it and then it projects onto that screen that's also connected to the little box? Is that how it works? Exactly. You've got it. Cool. You're looking at the projector the screen. What screen is on that? Well, I think for folks who are willing to help get it on Kickstarter, I think they're saying like two ninety nine or something like that will get you one. Okay. And a few, few little extras too. So, you know, but the price might come down once they've got it going and it's like a real product yeah. that's... Uh, Larger uh, quantities, so. Oh, that's awesome! I can I see that it's got the GPS on the left side too. That would be actually really nice to have for GPS. Like it's just yeah. basically like turn here, turn here, turn here. <laughs> exactly. You don't that's have to take your eyes problem. away from the road. Hey, that's one of the most dangerous times for me is when I'm like sitting there with a GPS going yeah. looking down at it, pulling it back up, looking down. That's just a little bit crazy. This right. is the future we were promised. Is what I think. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Okay, I got a. So we'll put that in the show notes. What do you got? Okay, for what I've got now is I'm looking... Okay, first, I wanted to just talk about a little bit of Android PC stuff here. So I've got two of the latest Android PC, mini PCs here. This is the uh, TronSmart Orion R28 and the ProBox 2 EX. These are two of the best ones out right now, and... I didn't have it, but the Minix Neo X8-H is probably also one of the best ones, if not the best one out right now. But I just want to talk about a little bit about which one of these is better, because uh, a lot of people on my channel really love these things. So let's go ahead and... So I just reviewed the Tron Smart, and maybe I didn't give enough details on it, but it's a good box. It's fast. It's got the latest uh, rock chip processor, which is based on the newest ARM architecture instead of the older A9 architecture. It's got an A17 architecture. Anyways, what it means is it's going to be nice and fast. And the strong point on this guy, I'd say right now, is gaming. It's got a better mm -hmm. GPU in it also. Gaming is just liquid smooth. It was really fun to play. And it got a little warm, awesome. but it never overheated. And they what all kind of games did you use? Games on there. But... Uh, Video playback's pretty good. 1080p works well on most things, uh, but you know, still there was the occasional lag, um, especially in like say XBMC, and then 4K wouldn't work in XBMC on this guy. Although it looked good, it was just slow. And then MX Player, it would work, but still occasional choppiness, just very slight on 4K. So 1080p works pretty good on here, but it's the software's still just a tad buggy. It's not quite there yet. And it's got some of the old problems of some of the old rock chip players. Like, uh, okay, they put they partition the the drive storage out. You, this is an Android thing. I, Apple does it the right way and just gives you all your app space and your, anything left over is not visible to you. This guy, you have two gigs of app storage space, and then you have like 12 gigs of just storage for like files and stuff. But why don't they just make it one big partition? 
That's what this one does. That's what the, these are AM Logic devices here. That's what this one does. It just gives you all your storage space in one spot, so you never run out. When you install a couple games, you know games can be a terabyte a piece. You run out of space really fast. So this guy, I've already ran out of space on it. I had two gigs of app storage space, and I know you can change that by installing a custom ROM, but I don't want to have to do that. Why would the factory just do that to you? You know, without you know, and I, we complained about it for a long time. So that's annoying. It's just got a few little quirks that that don't make it the perfect player. These guys, I'd say, are the best players out right now. They're the least buggy. They're good at video playback. It's fast and smooth. They can even handle 4K well. Um, you know, there's still a couple little bugs here and there, but overall, these are my favorite right now, these rock chip players. So let's go into the ProBox one. ProBox comes with this just kick-ass remote. This thing's like an air mouse remote, so you can move it around like this, and the mouse will just go on the screen. And... The remote kicks butt. I would buy this remote and put it on whatever player you get. It's the best one I've used, at least my favorite. Minix has one that's similar form factor, which is almost perfect, but the mousing is just not... It doesn't feel quite right. I don't know what it is about it, but it's it's good, but it's not. this one's easier to use. And so it would have been right up there, this one, but that is its only drawback. So this is the guy I recommend. It's about 30 bucks, and it's worth it. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. These players are solid. Very few bugs. This and also the Minix probably even even less bug free and I uh, highly recommend them. They can play 4K, they can play 1080p no problem, XBMC works very smooth in here. These players have seemed to have always been better in XBMC but especially now it's really good. It's finally gotten to like prime time so uh, definitely a solid player. I would, um, I don't know, this is one of my favorites. Uh, gaming is good on it too. And it's got this one's only got two ports. The Minix has three USB ports, so that's one little thing I really I like about the Minix a little bit better. Just three ports is just the right number. And um, oh yeah, one last thing too. These can take 128 gig micro SD cards, whereas these can only take 32 gig micro SD cards. So just another little issue too, right there. Okay, so sweet. Put that aside and move sounds to the like the rock chip ones are really the way to go nowadays. If you no no no, game. AM Logic I think is a little bit better. Rock chip's getting there, but AM Logic uh, is because it's still too buggy. AM Lo rock chip's almost there. It's like it's it needs like a I don't know. It's going to become super popular. Every Chinese tablet's got that chip in it now. You, like fifty percent of the tablets have that, and then probably thirty percent have this this other uh, oh, what's it called another this one that uses an 8-core one, and then the Intel ones are coming up fast, too. So um, I'm hoping to get an Intel media player pretty soon. You can run Windows oh, or cool. Android on it. And I wish you could do dual boot, but they said that's not possible. So, Anyways, mm. yeah, the Beam Logic I think, is probably a little bit better right now. Unless you want to do gaming, the Rock Chip seems real solid for gaming. With a wired... Okay. I use this wired Xbox controller here, and it worked good. I couldn't get my Bluetooth one to connect, so who knows? Yeah. But it seems like there'd be a little bit of lag in a Bluetooth anyway, so... Yeah, I've always noticed that, too. It's like, why did... I would, if I was into, like, hardcore gaming, I would never want any possibility of lag. Yeah. And it's like, seems like people are willing to accept that for, you know, just to have a wireless. But I, to me, it'd be worth it. I'd rather have no lag at all, so... Yeah. That's just me, but you're exactly right on that. All cool. right. Do you want to do one, or do you want... I can do another one. <laughs> i got a whole lineup of things here. Uh, well, I mean... It just ahead. depends if you want to kind of jump around or not. Oh, go ahead. You do one. Different. Okay, well, since you did a product, I'm going to do one too, just like um, something that I'm kind of stoked about. It kind of like this might be retro for you guys. I don't know if you've had these things for a long time. How do I do it? Um, I don't know. I guess I just show you. Hang on. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, so the Gorilla Pod. This is the Gorilla Pod, but this is the new part. Is just this grip tight part. Basically, you can just take your phone on and off on this, and this is adjustable. So it's spring loaded. Um, yeah, it's spring loaded. So that's gonna that's gonna hold pretty much. I think even like some of the, most of the phablets would fit into that thing. So um, I, it's nice and stable. I mean, it's just you could just like let me just demonstrate. You know, it's not going anywhere. So um, if you're doing any kind of like mobile video or mobile photography, this thing's gonna make it like so much better. Just You're going to get nice still shots and stuff like that. So I'm ex excited to try this out. My last one, um, I had a special case that fit with it, but it, you had, you know, once you change phones, then it's no good. You have to buy a new case or something. Oh, so yeah. This, so that just clamps onto any phone, right? Not yep. only an iPhone. 
Yeah, any phone. So it's got like a little bit of uh, like silicon rubber rubberized stuff right in here to oh, like really perfect. hold it tight. And then this part, like um, you can take off like here if you want to detach it and stuff. Is that, like that. a standard tripod mount right down there, or what is that? It is. That is a standard tripod mount. See, I would buy that top part is what I would like because it's like yeah, you I always want to do video. You always want to do video yeah. with a you know one of the with a phone, and it's really hard to get a phone mounted onto a tripod. How much is that top part? Or let's put we'll put a link to it in the description down below. Yeah, the whole thing's only like twenty bucks, so I mean you know. So you, you might buy the whole thing just for the tripod mod. mount. Exactly. Okay, cool. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna go for one here. Try to get these done quickly. So I'm gonna jump back to okay. My new phone is going to be it was gonna be the iPhone five or six. Six. Camera's just sweet on that phone. I was thinking about getting that. But I'm such an Android guy, just I don't know if I can do it, you know. If I had money to buy two phones, six hundred bucks a piece, I would probably go one iPhone. Just because it it just has a kick-ass camera and it's a fast phone, it's good solid phone. But then it became it was going to be the Note 4, but that phone's just a little big for me. I've had a Note 3 and it's the same size as that, and I just it's just a tad too big. I just I don't think I can do it. So my new 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 phone is <laughs> nothing. The Sony Xperia Z3. Oh, I'm excited! Dude. That's screen. awesome. Yeah, it, I like oh, I everything about it, but. I like the square phones. I've always thought that was a little better look, just slightly more squared up. I yeah. wish it had a bit teenier bezels. That's my only complaint. But um, and it doesn't have the it has the Snapdragon S eight hundred one or eight hundred one processor, which is good. But you know, it's not the it's not the S eight hundred five, which is the latest and greatest. But it's still a really fast processor and it's a really efficient processor. And um, but anyway, two inch screen, which is the perfect size for me. And here's the black one, which I'm probably going to go black. I decided to move away from going to white. And But it's what the ma favorite thing about it is that it uses a Sony sensor. A lot of the phones don't use Sony sensors, although I think the iPhone does. And the mm -hmm. Sony sensors are, like, the best, really. I work on a lot of image sensors at my work at Micron, and Sony is probably the best sensor company out there, at least for the masses. They uh, were the first one of the first ones to go to the backside illuminated sensors, which gets more light in there. Um, a short story, basically, the sensor just looks freaking awesome on this phone. It's really phenomenal. So that's one of the main things. The video stabilization, Sony's got the best in the industry for sure. Electronic stabilization is, on theirs, it's actually better than a lot of other phones, even optical stabilized ones, I think. It's mm -hmm. just so good. So you can, like, walk around. It doesn't, you don't know that it's on. It just, it's just stable. It just looks like you're floating around like a ghost. So that's good. And then... Uh, the phone actually has some cool software on it. Like, it has a lot of little extra software that's actually really nice. Like, it's got an option to capture the screen, but not just photos, but video. So you can do a video screen capture. You can just be hmm. capturing as you're going through running apps, save that whole video, and then do what you want with that, you know? And then it's got some other nice little apps that are like, it's like a full version of app, and they're not trying, app of of an app that you would pay for, and they're not trying to, like, sell you something when you use the app, so I think that's a nice thing that Sony does that Samsung, like, here's an example of what bugs me about Samsung. They, okay, I had a remote control app, so it has an IR blaster, and you can control the remote, your TV with the phone, right? But mm -hmm. to use the remote, you open the app, and then you got to go through their movie store and spend all this time getting through the movie store until you can finally get to the TV to control the TV, by the time you do that, you could have just went and picked up the remote control and controlled it, you know? So it's like right. they're trying to force their all their stuff on you. Instead of just giving you an app that makes the phone better, they're actually giving you an app that makes it kind of, like, less good, you know? So yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm going to try Sony out. I like the company. I really like their cameras. I use mostly their good cameras. Good cameras, yeah. I've I'm got the Sony camcorder that, that I film with. I've got the Sony RX100, uh, which I also shoot with. And I'm looking to get another Sony camera. Um, I'll show you that one in a minute here. I think you're exactly right about their um, digital stabilization probably being better than a lot of um, OISs to uh, optical stabilizations. I mean, OIS is probably the best sometimes, but for a phone, I don't know. If you just wait, I'll do a review on it. You'll see, or you go look up the video quality on the Sony, and it's the most stable thing I've seen, and it just looks good. Bottom line is it just looks damn good. So we'll wait and see. I'll get it. I'll probably review it, so you can check that out. The uh, digital stabilization in the iPhone 6 is pretty good, though, too. I just put a plug in I, for that I would like right to now. try that. You're right. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, no, I haven't had enough time to mess with that yet, so that's true. I would like to see what that looks like. 
I'm going to put a little video up on my on my site of some um, extra slow motion from the iPhone. Just video I took uh, of some water waterfalls and stuff like that, so people can check out both the slow motion and just you know there's probably a little bit of stabilization going on in them. So. Okay, yeah, do that. You put we'll put a link to it. So also, you know, one thing too, I think the iPhone 6 uses a Sony sensor, so possibly they're using the same stabilization too. Yeah, it could be. That Z3 looks cool. I remember seeing the Z2 at, at CES and being pretty impressed. Is it is it a waterproof phone oh, yeah. too? It's fully waterproof too. You can you can go swimming with it. Dude, that could turn me that's into an Android it. guy again. I that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I like that option. I was gonna go to Hawaii here in a few weeks, so I was gonna hopefully get that phone by then and take it. And then of course I'll probably destroy it on the. <laughs> no, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, I didn't even get to talk about the accessories on the Z3 either. The, the Z3 has. Um, Oh, I didn't. I had a picture of them, but I lost it. It has a couple different accessories. It's got Qi wireless charging built in, so you can just set it in a little what? cradle that it comes with. It has headphones or earbuds that are noise canceling. Also, I'm not sure if they come with it or if those are an accessory, but I thought that was kind of a cool little option. And there's a, like it looked like a little bracelet also that's made for it. So that's probably like a fitness tracker or something like that. And there's a little speaker or like a little microphone you can stick into it, so you could do like videos and have like good audio instead of crappy phone audio with it. So they're, I kind of like the way Sony goes because they, they shoot for like people who like to make movies and stuff like that a lot. And that's... that's no. So I like one thing, a lot of their things. One thing I'll, I'll be interested to see is how it performs underwater, like when you're shooting some video in Hawaii with it, because one thing I noticed about the iPhone is there's it's a little bit hard to uh, snap the shutter and stuff. Like you can use the volume keys to snap the shutter, but it's hard to go between video and, and uh, camera mode and stuff like that. So if they have some way to like access different things on it, that would be good. So this is when you were using the underwater case for the iPhone in, in yeah. Hawaii? Or so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. When I, yeah. I used a special case for it. Well, I think almost any phone that's made not made for underwater, you got to start the video before you go in the water because once you go underwater, the touch screen doesn't work unless it's got like actual physical buttons on it. So... Yeah. Well, maybe it'll let you use the uh, volume rockers for, for a shutter, but you'll see, I guess. Okay. Can I lead into this other thing that I was looking at getting yeah. here, too? This is the camera. There's gonna. This is actually not... This is the RX10, but the new version of... This is a really uh, highly reviewed camera. Everyone who gets it loves it. It's got awesome image quality. It's got the sensor of the RX100 Mark III, same backside yeah, I can't as the Sony one-inch sensor. But this is the RX10. But there's going to be an RX20 coming out any in a, within a week or two. It should be announced, and it has all that same stuff. It's got like a tilting LCD, so you can tilt it up or down. So you, like if you're in a crowd, you can hold it up over your head and see what you're looking at. It's got a really nice zoom lens. It's got a uh, oh, I'm not. <laughs> can you show us a shot of it? <laughs> yeah, that's sorry. Uh, okay, here it is. So it's got a zoom lens. It's a 24 to 200 millimeters. So that's a pretty nice range right there should be useful for a lot of different situations. And it's a two point, f2.8 lens also, so very uh, good in low light. And, oh yeah, so so here's <laughs> here's the RX10. It should look just like, the RX20 should look very similar to it. And the only and the main difference, though, is it's going to have all those features that everyone likes, but it'll also have 4K video. So I think I'm, that's going to be my next camera. So Because I'd like to have two cameras for doing this anyways that are like, I mean, I already have the RX100, but... It's just not as good a video quality as some of the some of the newer cameras. It's like over a year and a half old, probably, and it, maybe two, probably two years old. Anyways, um, it's a good camera, but the video is not quite as good as uh, like a camcorder. But yeah, anyways, there's the tilting screen on the RX10. So uh, this will probably be my next camera, and I'll try to review it. But this is kind of what the type of thing I'm looking for. Like I want something. It's not a full DSLR, but it's kind of like a prosumer. Uh, you know, not quite up to DSLR, just because DSLRs have all those manual settings and it takes time to set all that up, and I like to just shoot and go, and I don't have, I've got kids and stuff, and I don't have time for setting all these settings sometimes, so this should be a good compromise, get good image quality, video quality, 4K video, and not have to do too many settings while you're setting up a shot, so that's that, probably going to be my next camera. Go ahead. Does that, uh, that backside display, does it flip out enough so that you could face the camera and see the display No, at once. it doesn't have that option. Oh. That's the only, uh, yeah, there's only a few that have that. Um, some of the Canons, I think, have that, those T2I, yeah. T5Is and stuff like that. Um, that Panasonic uh, FC1000 I had for a brief time had that. 
that was a good camera, but mine had a problem with it. It was making a lot of noise when I could hear the, it sounded like the focus was like constantly trying to focus or something inside it, so I had to return it. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's that, though. But here's, let me show you the tilt again. Yeah, it only tilt, it'll tilt up, tilt up like, or out 90 degrees so you can look straight down at it, which is super useful, and then tilt the other way so you can look up at it you know, when you're holding the phone uh, camera up above your head, like, in a crowded yeah, area. Yeah, that's be like that. useful, so I think that is nice. That's a nice feature. Yeah, that's, to me, I don't see why even the top, you know, Canon 5D Mark III or whatever the next version is, it should have a moving screen. I mean, for t photographers, they'll, like, lay on the ground, like, at our when we got our wedding photos on the beach, the guy's laying on the ground in the sand, you know, his head's almost on the sand trying to get these shots, and I'm like, he wouldn't have to get get down there if he had that tilting screen, you know, it'd probably be a lot a lot quicker and easier for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a hassle. So that'll be nice. Yeah. So you have another item to look at or do you have some more yeah. news? Yeah, I got some more news items here. Um, one that I thought was kind of interesting is, uh, let's see if I can get, pull this thing up. Oh, yeah, this is kind of funny. Like the camera's cutting off the top of your head just a little bit, by the way. Oh, okay. Let me get you this. I guess, I don't know if I really have a photo for this one, but... Um, like you heard about that guy who broke into the White House and stuff. Yeah. It turns out that um, this is kind of crazy. Is that the usher just like turned off the system because that basically would have alerted people to who are just like walking into the building because he was hearing the notification too much. It just made me think of like how you get like sick of all these notifications and he's, after a while you don't like even hear them. It's like yeah. but that that one's like pretty important notification like <laughs> intruder That's in the White crazy. House. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe that. Well, I think that guy might have lost his job, didn't he? I think so, yeah. I hope a couple people lost their jobs over, over that because that seems like a pretty, uh, yeah, pretty big uh, oversight. But anyway, just I just was thinking about because I get a lot of notifications in two, and now sometimes I, like, I don't even hear them. So <laughs> if anyone's got a good idea on how to like stop notification fatigue, let, me, let us know. <laughs> I'll tell you one way, and that's I just turn them all off. I, don't, I get, like, Facebook and... I turned off all the email stuff. I don't want a notification every time I get an email. You know, I just have it refresh every couple hours, and that's that's all. You know, I just don't I don't want notifications yeah, for don't want too many. anything. The only oh. notifications I get are from apps that barely ever notify me, so I don't I didn't know to turn them off. You know, so they'll notify me like once every couple days or something, and I'll I'll leave those because I don't get around to it. Yeah, the ones that I I'm trying to still use are the. Um, location-based reminders. I kind of like being able to just roll up to the grocery store and it's like, oh, here's your grocery list. Or, you know, like you go to some store you don't usually go to and all of a sudden you've got like your list that you'd written out a while ago but kind of forgot to maybe take with you sometimes. Yeah. So those are cool. But um, one last little story I got was, um, did you see the story about the USBs having a security? Um, oh, yeah, breach? and it's unfixable too. I didn't... Read yeah. all of it, but it's something that's probably built into the hardware that's vulnerable, so it's they can't fix yeah. it. Yeah, that's messed up. But well, maybe they can make a virus program that will at least detect it when something does try to get in that way or something. Yeah. Well, the lesson wow. here is if you ever find a thumb drive in a parking lot or anywhere, never probably just don't plug it into a computer. I was actually listening, reading an article on that too, and they said what they would do is they'd take a CD-ROM or a thumb drive and write like employee pay pay scales or something like that, basically, put it in a company parking lot, and they'd have almost a 100% success rate of getting someone to put it in a computer, usually at that business. So That's even scary. CD ROM, not even just a thumb drive. Thumb drive was easier. The CD ROM, they'd even get them to play when they put employee comparison pay or something like that on there. So yeah, if you ever find a thumb yeah. drive, don't ever. I wouldn't put it in, you know. I mean, if you find what, like you find a thumb drive, like it's a different story if maybe I don't know, you you find one in, in your house or something like that. But Right. I think that's going to make me a little bit more skeptical about like when someone just wants to use their thumb drive on my computer, though. Like Sometimes someone's like, oh, I just want to download some photos or something. So I might well, try using wireless stuff more often yeah, now. These are for malicious, you know, that's how they got, probably how they got the, you know, in Iran, they put that Stuxnet virus on their nuclear, uh, their uh, centrifuges. That's probably how they did it, is they put some thumb drives out there in the parking lot and Maybe they had some inside people yeah. too. But, um, you know, it's got to have malicious stuff on there. I don't know if you, if it's just like a, vi a virus, at least not at this point. So you it know? can't transfer from tran from one uh, well, it can, thumb drive to another. 
sorry, they can't they transfer. Can, but uh, you know, I think most of the thumb drives where you have to actually worry is when somebody puts it. It it, it probably will come in the future too, I guess. Yeah, they need to they need to fix that with the USB spec. That's, That's gonna be hard though, because like I said, it's in hardware. They can't just correct that with a software update. But they could probably make virus scanners fix it. Okay, here I'll go ahead and. That's oh, why you needed Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Yeah. <laughs> Your head's completely Especially cut off in this video, Joel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you lean uh, the, up just a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, yes, there you yeah, go. Yeah, it's just it's just funny because like this this thing I was kind of bummed at first because it didn't have a USB port, but now that that story broke, I'm like, oh, that's cool that it's only got Thunderbolt, so it's like more secure. But anyway. Yeah. Well, it'll probably take a while for that to start so to start spreading. Another thing, by the way, I'm really interested in is Android is finally, probably next year, about the early beginning of the next year, middle of next year, they're going to get a USB cable that's reversible like iPhone has. So that'll be a big oh, yeah. upgrade. I a hate C that micro version. USB plug that you can't see, you know. And yeah, a lot of times it's like dark out, and you're trying to like just plug it into your cigarette lighter thing or something, and it's like, which way does it go? Damn it, I can't see. Yeah. In my bedroom, it's dark, and I plug it in, and I can't see, and I'm just so worried I'm going to push it too hard and break something in there. But, yeah, that's one yeah. thing that will be nice that Android to copy iOS, you know? Like, yeah, they both smart. copy each other. Like, Apple copied that drop-down menu on the top of the screen, you know? I just mm -hmm. like Android. Was, that was a good thing that Android had, but Android's going to copy, like, the USB cable kind of thing. So that will be a huge upgrade, too. Yeah, it's good. Hey, speaking of Apple and Android, um, do you have some ac some apps to recommend this time? Um, I can do one real quick here. Let's cool. see. Okay, let me do this. Can I do one real quick, and then you want to do one, or do yeah. you want me to yeah, go do for one? it. Do one. Okay, this is kind of a two for one. I just got the Galaxy S. Um, let's see, what is this? The Galaxy S Tab. I just got it like a couple hours ago, so I can't even remember the name on it yet. Galaxy Samsung Galaxy Tab S. So the cool thing about this guy is that it's got a uh, fingerprint sensor that doesn't work. No, it does work. I just did it at an angle. That's what the problem is. Okay, there we go. So the cool thing about this guy, though, is it's got an OLED screen, and that screen is 2660 by 1600. So it's a really nice-looking screen, like the best on any tablet I've seen. Plus, the thing is just super thin and light. Like, here it is compared to the iPad Air, and it's just lighter Thinner, I can't believe it. I thought the iPad Air was the thinnest little light thing ever. Anyways, um, the app on here is I'm going to review is Lux. So Lux, it's not the best place to review it, but it, it's a brightness app. So I, this came in really handy on the LG G3 because it was always a little dim. The cool thing about this is like you just okay on the on the Samsung's brightness, you just either pick. I want, it, I want it this bright, all the way up, all the way off, somewhere in the middle, and it stays that brightness always. Or you can turn it on auto, and it will always be a little too bright no matter what you do. On the LG, <laughs> it's always a little too dim no matter what you do when you put it on auto. But with Lux, you pick the center point, and then, depending on the lighting conditions, it stays there. So if I walk into some really bright light, oh, that is it will get bright, even brighter. If I walk into a really dark room, it will get even dimmer. So it... it you know, it's still auto, but it picks this where what level of light you like, and then it adjusts for that compared to the outside, the light that you're in. So that is really cool. smart. I'd like to see and in it's that. Free. So nice. it's called Lux L U X. That's my app review for the for the day here. Kicks ass, and it's got a whole bunch of other features too that I don't even have time to use. And there's also a pay version that gives you even more stuff if you're rooted and things like that. So check that out. And I'll have a review of this tablet up soon, but so far it's just been awesome. It's fast too. Got 3,500 and then 22, 35,000. I mean, so that's my nice. app review. Cool. I'll just do one real quick here too. Um, just uh, one that you might have heard of before, and it's available for Android and uh, and for iOS is the Photosphere, and it just basically makes like a a photo that you can you can it's like a full circle and up up into the sky and everything too, and uh, just lets you. <laughs> it's kind of funny trying to do this. So this from is the side. Google Photospheres for iPhone is what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the version yeah. I have, but you can get it for Android too. Oh yeah, um, Android has one with a whole bunch of different things besides Photospheres too. But the iPhone one, I used it and it's fast. Like it's much faster than my Android one. I don't know if it's because the pictures are lower resolution or the iPhone's just really fast processor. 
but it takes them like almost faster than you can move the phone. So yeah, and I like I like that how it just you can quickly do it where you move the phone and it moves like it's almost like you're looking through a window and it see, is. You know, yeah, we're just like yeah. looking at it this way. It's almost like having like um, a little virtual reality thing on your I face. I love it. You just have that like right up here. It's it's like being there. It's pretty cool. It's even cooler with a tablet actually because then it's like you've got a good size window to look through. Yeah, the other thing it lets you do is that you can upload it to Google Earth, I think it is, or Google Maps, uh -huh. and then you can make them public. So you know, people who go to places can be like, oh, I wonder what that looks like there, and they can, you know, see different spheres. You can look at it on a regular computer too. So yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's it. Photosphere. Yeah. So Photosphere, get it for iPhone, get it for uh, Android as well. Or actually, yeah, and they're free. It's called Google Cameras, act Google Camera actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good to know. But yeah, any a lot of people iPhone don't think it's available because it's a Google app, but it's it is and it's it's a good one. Yeah, and did, I you had another one right, Bubbly, but it wouldn't let you get the pictures out of there. Like you were just kind of yeah, you kind of stuck, stuck in the ecosystem it. forever. Yeah, that one had a couple different problems. I like this better for a few reasons, but um, yeah, this one you can kind of get them off your phone and have them on uh, on somewhere else, like you know, basically on Google servers instead of filling up your phone with pretty big files so yeah one of the nice. coolest one of the coolest things too is it goes you can put it onto Google Maps where you see the pictures you know so like say you go to some beach that there's no roads near and then someone did a photosphere there you can then go and have a 360 degree view of where they were standing when they took that photosphere if they uploaded it and and tagged it with the location information so it's uh, yeah it's like a you know like Google Street View except better quality, and it can go to places where there aren't streets if somebody chose to put that picture up there. So I think it's an awesome app, and it's really easy to get that on the iPhone version to the mapping part of it too. Cool. <laughs> okay, one last thing for me, and I think I, this is all the last stuff I have here. So um, let's go ahead and switch over. Okay, this is the Phantom Two drone. I'm so pretty serious about getting one pretty soon, but I just have so much stuff going on. I just don't think I'll have time for it until the spring, so I'm gonna probably get one then. But this thing is right. I was just about to buy one like two weeks ago. It was like a thousand one hundred dollars. You get the the drone. It doesn't come with the GoPro for that much, but it does come with this little gimbal right here. See that it's got wow. uh, this is like a motor electronic motor that controls like up left, right, front, and back, so that it stabilizes it. It totally stabilizes it because it will be like much, much smoother with this thing and, That's awesome. and the GoPro. But the cool thing is I was going to get one like two weeks ago. It just dropped in price like 300 bucks. So it's like around $800 now where it was like $1,100. So just want to point that out that if you're thinking about getting one, you just had a really nice price drop. Gives you everything. The, the gimbals, what they call that stabilizer, the remote control, the drone, and now they have the GoPro 4. If you get the black edition, it will work on there. You can't the the silver edition doesn't work because it's a little bigger and it has a screen on it and it might be too heavy or something. But the black edition will work, so you could do 4K drone droning if you need to. But I just think it'd be sweet to be able to, you know, I, I, for a long time I just didn't see any point, but just to get an aerial shot of something, especially if you want to make movies. I mean, you do a couple, bunch of ground stuff and then you have one or two flybys with a drone, and it's just, I mean, that's like a professional big budget film would do. So just uh. I don't know, I'm probably going to get one. I just like it, especially if you go into like some remote area and then, you know, maybe there's a waterfall or something. You can fly this thing right up the waterfall so you have like so many better angles. Of course, you it has to be a remote area because if you go to some popular tourist place, probably people are going to get mad about you flying a drone around if there's a bunch of people there. And right. I'd say there's a chance that they're dangerous as far as if you hit those propellers, so you couldn't really fly it in like a really crowded area at all either. But anyways, just wanted to let you guys know about this uh, nice price drop, and I'll probably get one in the spring because they're my buddy who has drones. He flies a lot of them. He says this is the best one to get into. It's like the the some of the other brands aren't as easy to fly. What this one does is whenever you're not moving, it just hovers. So you. Just, I heard about that. That's awesome. He is being able to fly. He flew his other one into the side of a house, or he said the house <laughs> flew into his drone. But anyways, he was getting the Phantom Two next. So this is the one to get if you're going to get one. It's eight hundred to $900, depending, you know, there's some other options like, you know, screens to view remotely and stuff like that. But anyways, I I'm probably get one in the spring when I get some time. 
Does does it also have like the button on it where if it goes out of sight that you can hit the button and it'll like basically fly itself back to you? Um, yeah, actually, it doesn't even need a button for that. It, what it does is if it gets out of range or loses a GPS signal, it just flies back to the where it took off. I, actually, I don't know about the GPS signal, but if it gets out of range, loses the signal with the, the remote control, it just flies back to its launch place. And I've seen some videos on that, and it usually lands within about five to eight feet of where you la- launched it, so it's pretty pretty dang accurate. Wow. What awesome. I wonder, though, is, like, say you fly it up really high, but you fly out of some trees through a hole in the trees, you know, does it then come back? Does it fly straight back, then straight down, or does it come at like a, you know, does it come at an angle right back to where you were at? Because if it comes at an angle, you could be in yeah. trouble because it could try to fly through the tree canopy, you know. So yeah. probably probably takes the same path as it is it left is what I'm thinking, but well, we have to wait and see. All right, you have any other anything else to review? No, man, that's that's about it. But uh, it's been all right. Fun. Well, you want to tell us where we can find you and some of your reviews? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Sim- Simple Tech Rev, uh, R E V at the end there. Um, Is it all one it, word? Yeah, all one word, no spaces. So Simple Tech Rev, and then um, I also have a website, just SimpleTechReview.com. So look for me at those two places. Okay, so. cool. And you can always find me on Some Cool Tech. Just type in Some Cool Tech in YouTube, and my video, my website on there, YouTube channel is Some Cool Tech, and then I also have SomeToolCoolTech.com. Uh, for more details on reviews, and I usually put like pros and cons on there, whereas in the video notes I'll just put, uh, you know, links to the items and things like that. So look for me there. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and as always, aloha. Adios.